OK conference. I'm now going to uh, announce the results for the leadership of the Labour Party. As with the results of the deputy leadership election, I will now be announcing the votes for each candidate by round. Andy Burnham, 80,462. <laughs> Yvette Cooper, 71,928. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, 251,000. <laughs> The MP Jeremy Corbyn, for years a stalwart of left-wing British politics, has been elected the new leader of the Labour Party. Hard left candidate Jeremy Corbyn secures an overwhelming victory. Well, I'm joined now by Will Self, the author and professor at Brunel University, who voted for Jeremy Corbyn, and by Matthew Paris, a Times columnist and former Conservative MP. As for, as for Corbyn himself, it's, you know, it's remarkably difficult to think of anything interesting to say <laughs> about his arrival. You're doing pretty well so far. It, it, it's like a bear comes to live in your house and you can argue, will his, will his claws tear the sofa? Where will the bear poo? What happens if people come to, Usually to in dinner? Usually Well, the fact is it's a bear and, um, and that, that, that's all there is to be said. It's a disaster. The first thing it says is the moronic MPs <laughs> who nominated Jeremy Corbyn to have a debate it includes John need, Crudders, need though. their heads yeah. felt. They need their heads well, felt. They should be ashamed of themselves. Um, so what about, what about the new leader of the Labour Party? Good for business? No, not really. I mean, I'm an ordinary... I, I consider myself an ordinary member of the public. The reason that the press have started to ignore Jeremy Corbyn is he is quite clearly never going to be elected. He is quite clearly but you never make going that to be decision. prime minister. That, There's just not a sure. chance. Hi. Politics is in a kerfuffle at the moment. The usual suspects are being rejected, and all kinds of crazy individuals are taking the reins. Now, arguably, this started with the rise of Jeremy Corbyn in the UK, and the reactions were strong. But they were all a rather singular voice, all a bit past it. I think it's time to present something a little different. I am a member of the Labour Party. Um, I joined when I was 15, I think. When I was 15, um, one night I was watching Question Time when I was about 15, and just what was being said by the Tory candidate, Tory people on the panel, was really annoying me. And it was a pound to join for young members, and I had a pound in my pocket, and I gave it to my mum, borrowed her card, and joined up. And I've been a member ever since. Yeah, I'm a member of the Conservative Party. Um, I believe generally in centre-right economic ideals, so, you know, believe in low taxation, that business should be allowed to, like, prosper, because that creates jobs and employment. Um, Taking it from a Scottish perspective, I agree with the union, which is generally our main USP at the moment. So, yeah, those make me a Tory, I suppose. I'm not a member of any political party, and I never have been. It feels like a cage. I like being able to like things from certain groups. Old Labour, not new Labour. Um, some of the SNP stuff, and a lot of the Green stuff as well. Um, that's about it, to be honest, these days. No one else really stands for much. These strikes are wrong at a time when negotiations are still going on. But parents and the public have been let down by both sides because the government has acted in a reckless and provocative manner. After today's disruption, I urge both sides to put aside the rhetoric, get round the negotiating table and stop it happening again. Um, I listened to your speech in Wrexham and you talked about the Labour Party being a movement. A lot of people in that movement uh, are the people who are on strike today and they'll be looking at you and thinking, well, you're describing these strikes as wrong. Why aren't you giving us more leadership as a leader of the Labour movement? At a time when negotiations are still going on, I do believe these strikes are wrong. And that's why I say both sides should, after today's disruption, get round the negotiating table, put aside the rhetoric and sort the problem out. Because the public and parents have been let down by both sides. The government's acted in a reckless and provocative manner. Ed Miliband didn't stand for anything. He wasn't new, he wasn't interesting. And quite frankly, he was terrible. 
he was a terrible public speaker, he didn't stand for anything, he had no real interest, interesting aspects about him at all. And I think from that perspective, he completely disillusioned a lot of people within the Labour Party. They didn't know what he was or what he stood for. They couldn't see him as a Prime Minister. And I think from that perspective, it's fully understandable why someone like Jeremy Corbyn came up after him. But here it is, 10 o'clock, and we are saying the Conservatives are the largest party. Britain needs a Labour Party that can rebuild after this defeat so we can have a government that stands up for working people again. And now it's time for someone else to take forward the leadership of this party. So I'm tendering my resignation, taking effect after this afternoon's commemoration of VE Day at the Cenotaph. Labour is taking a long, hard look at itself after its defeat. The contest to succeed Ed Miliband is now getting underway, with the new leader to be chosen in September. Among the four candidates currently in the running is Andy Burnham, the Shadow Health Secretary, and he's here with me now. Welcome to you. Thank uh, you. Andy Good morning, Burnham. Andrew. Are you the continuity candidate? No, I'm the change candidate because we've got to reach out to those voters who had doubts about us on immigration and on economic uh, competence. Fiscal credibility is at the heart of all we do because people need to trust us with our money to win, but also because there's nothing progressive about spending more on debt interest uh, payments than, it is, than spending on the future of educating our children. So we do have to win back people who voted Tory and win back people who voted UKIP, but I don't think that necessarily means just swallowing the Tory manifesto. We had quite a, a centrist bunch standing for the, for the leadership and it was a bit of a wet bunch. And what people saw at that time was three cardboard cutouts who represented the same failing sort of Blair Brown, post-Thatcher nonsense where Labour didn't really stand for anything. They were a, you know, a ball here away for the Tories in terms of policy. The same systems again, the same propagation of just neoliberalist bullshit, which has decimated so many communities. And then you had Jeremy Corbyn. And Jeremy Corbyn started talking about old school Labour values. People Yvette, I'm instead. very pleased that you accept that the politics of austerity is one of the problems we face. We went into the last election promising cuts. We went into the 2010 election promising cuts. Are we going to go into a 2020 election because Osborne will not have balanced the books by that stage, saying, well, an incoming Labour government, the first thing we've got to do is make more cuts in order to make ourselves credible. I say invest to grow. Yes, you can't no, cut your way to prosperity. You you grow your way He's getting support, he's got a lot of support. I can see why, because he's sort of, he's more focusing, quite ironically for politics, which is a bit hard, with youth. So youth are very much backing Corbyn as like some savior, I suppose, a voice for them in politics. Personally, I think he is hugely overrated. Some of his policies are different, yes, but I think if you know the history of the Labour Party, he's very much that sort of late 70s um, classic Labour. He's that classic left-wing Labour Party who made it difficult for Neil Kinnock. They were the sort of people who Callaghan really was. They came from that sort of era. Historically, he's not new. From the modern day, he is very. He seems very new, and he seems like a new idea, and he seems like something else. I think his, his older ideology is what politics needs right now. With the increase of scope with relevant issues such as Brexit, you need to re-engage the young. So, yes, it's a little bit ironic, but... It shouldn't be shunned because there's been a huge campaign for the past 20 years to get young people involved in politics. We've had votes about whether 16 should be the voting age. So with Corbyn bringing in the young, I think that's exactly what politics needs at the moment. As the media and maybe many of us simply didn't understand the views of many young people within our society. They had been written off as a non-political generation who was simply not interested, hence the relatively low turnout and low level of registration of young people in the last general election. They weren't. They're a very political generation that were turned off by the way in which politics was being conducted and not attracted or not interested in it. We have to and must, and must change that. If you are a young person who's never really you know, followed politics before or has never you know, even voted, hearing that 
is a real, real breath of fresh air. I don't think I'd ever heard of Jer Jeremy Corbyn until he actually ran to be the leader of the Labour Party. First impressions, thought, um, quite a scruffy um, individual, but that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, um, I think people like the whole non-politician type acts. I mean, he's been in Parliament for like, what, three decades or something. So he's certainly been around a while. He has a great difficulty in conveying his opinions well. I'd been a member of the Labour Party in 2010 and left again, it just wasn't for me. And since then I sort of, I realised not only how much of a passionate unionist I was, but that the Tories really did speak to me. Um, the idea of aspiration and working hard for where you want to get to and the idea that work pays more than the welfare state does. And I think things like that, the idea of really, I know it sounds cheesy, but the whole living within your means idea um, and a country that works for everyone was really something that David Cameron's idea of what it was to be a one nation Tory and a modern Tory was something that really did speak to me as an individual. There's this idea that the Tories are really centrist and really at the moment they're very central, they're very kind of, you know, for everyone, one nation, you know, big society, when actually they're, you know, sort of the most right wing government we've had since Thatcher. Mr Corbyn, will the Prime Minister accept that ten years ago, in 1979, there were 2,750 households in temporary accommodation in London, the current figure is over 25,000, and a further 2,000 people are sleeping on the streets, and that when her government asked the local authorities what resources they required to deal with the homeless problem in London, they asked for at least £480 million. They were given less than one-sixth of what they wanted. Does she not agree that people sleeping on the streets of our capital city, being charged exorbitant rents, and children being brought up in bed-and-breakfast hotels is a disgrace to a civilised country? A lot of their policies are aimed at people that are currently in jobs, have their own homes, have mortgages and um, various other issues to deal with. The student loan is completely disintegrating any chance of the youth going, oh yes, to, must vote Tory. It's completely getting rid of them because you're making university even more expensive. You're basically taking university back to the 60s and 50s where it was middle class or no class at all. So if you're middle class, you can go in, you're guaranteed a position, you're guaranteed to have a chance at the uh, profession you want to go into. Currently, they're removing any chance of that. The student loan is a big hit, however there is very little interaction as a whole in many constituencies. If you have a problem, um, those especially of not voting age, you're not really going to get any contact. Parents, if they have a problem, can go straight to their MP, they can get things done. However, at a younger age, you might not even have the access to your MP, and without access, you're certainly not going to get any youth involved. You see that really the Tories are all sort of smoke and mirrors, and I think that what is quite refreshing to see with Jeremy is that he's actually a politician that's incredibly honest. Um, and I think that was kind of shown during the um, EU referendum when someone said, you know, out of 10, how much do you want to stay in Europe? And he said seven. And a lot of people saw that as something that was really negative and really bad. He should have said 10. But what he was doing there was realising that there are issues and were issues with the European Union, but we could only be in it to solve those issues. Well, at 20 minutes to five, we can now say the decision taken in 1975 by this country to join the common market has been reversed by this referendum uh, to leave the EU. We should be proud of the fact that in these islands, we trust the people with these big decisions. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. <laughs> I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. I love this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mike Pence. Thank you, everybody. In terms of Donald Trump and the election, and then in terms of Brexit as well, you have to, I think the two things have to be linked. It's more complex than just saying everybody's racist, everybody's misogynist, everybody hates immigrants. There is that. I don't think we should dance around that at all because that plays a significant portion of that vote was fueled by that. But not all Trump supporters are racist or not all people who voted Brexit are racist. 
a lot of people come from communities that have just been completely and utterly gutted and the governments, governments, political parties, not just one, you can't just blame it on Labour or the Tories, the entire system no longer represents them. What is there for them to look forward to in life? Job prospects are low on the ground. There's no, there's no, no more industry, large scale sense of the thing. And so a lot of people who, you know, maybe they were in stable jobs, they had a house, they would buy the house, uh, and all of that has sort of been t t torn away. You know, the rug's been ripped underneath from these people, and that anger is a legitimate anger. And I think that the left in particular, liberals, have not yet taken that seriously. I think one of the things that we absolutely need is more diversity within politics. So I think there's a lot of push for more women in politics, but I think that needs to go further. I think you need more um, disabled people, you need more openly gay people who are fighting for gay rights. You need more ethnic minorities in Parliament. I think you need you need more working class people. You need more middle class people. You need people who are just willing to say things. Sort of people who represent everyone. I think a lot of people want this idea of straight talking honest politics, as Corbyn and John McDonnell call it. The idea that people say what they believe, they say what they want. And I think that's what we're missing, is a, a, a belief that people passionately believe what they believe. There's no denying that Corbyn passionately believes what he believes. And I think from a young person's perspective, young people are incredibly passionate. They are incredibly passionate about what they believe in. They stand up for it. And I think they look for those people who say, look, this is what I believe. If I say it, I mean it. You should go into politics because you as a person fundamentally believe something. If you believe something, vote for it. Stand by it. Believe in what you say. Open up politics. I think politics needs to be opened up a bit more. It needs more access. The answer isn't always, well, build another party. It's actually, get more people involved, get more people to join and allow, especially the youth, to maybe inject something new. Politics lacks creativity and creativity can only be gained from youth. What do you think?